Hello, dears. In this video, I'm going to get the electric field on the axis of a uniformly charged ring. The ring is essentially a wire that is bent to take a, the, the shape of a circle with radius A. So the charge here is distributed over length. You should uh, know how to relate lambda, which is a linear charge density, with the total charge on the length. Let's say Q ring. Okay, so lambda equals Q, total charge on the ring, divided by the total charge length, which is the circumference here, 2 pi e, and the units of lambda is coulomb per meter, as you know. So to find the electric field here on the axis of the ring, the axis of the ring is a line that is perpendicular to the plane of the ring. I assume here that the ring is in the X, Y plane, so uh, the axis uh, in the Z direction, and at height Z, I want to find the electric field at this point called P. So remember the five steps strategy we already discussed in the previous video. I want to choose an element DQ and then find the electric field due to this element DQ. So uh, here is the small segment DQ. I pick this element DQ and draw the electric field vector due to this element. I'm going to call it DE as DE is a very small part of the electric field due to this element dq. So dE can be calculated by the formula, which is similar to the point of charge, ke dq divided by r squared. And r here is the distance uh, between the point of charge or the small element dq and the point. So now we already did step one and step two. So, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, resolve and find the components of the electric field. I'm going to uh, assume this angle is theta. Here, theta again. I'm going to make two components, find the two components of the electric field. The vertical one, BE cosine theta, and, and the horizontal components, BE sine theta. So before we go for integration, let's consider symmetry. Here, the ring. The, the ring is charged, and this charge has a high degree of symmetry, and the point is surrounded with a charge uh, with equal distance. Uh, every element on the ring uh, is, at the, is at the same distance with respect to the point. So I'm going to consider the electric field due to two elements. Okay, now we already drew the electric field due to the red element. Uh, on the left, and this element dq, okay, you already do the electric field due to this element and the code that de, it is de, and let's consider another element, I'm going to color it in blue, this uh, element on the right, okay, the element here will be, this distance is a, and this distance is a, here is r, and here is r, so the electric field DE will be the same formula, just like the electric field from this red element. Now the resolution of these two vectors will uh, result in uh, that the horizontal components will cancel each other. As you can see that the horizontal components will cancel each other. Let's do it step by step, okay? We are going to Call this angle theta, and this angle is theta two, and here is theta, and here is theta. So the horizontal components will be dE sine theta from this uh, red electric field, and dE sine theta from the blue electric field. These two components will cancel each other, and we have vertical components, one from the red electric field will be DE cosine theta, and the one from the blue electric field will be DE cosine theta. Now to sum up the electric field, we are going to focus on the vertical components only, as we already know that the horizontal components uh, already cancel each other. So now we are going to focus on the vertical components only. 
we have two options actually to go ahead to finish this question. Either to consider one component, okay, this is DE cosine theta. And when you are going to sum up over the charge, to sum up over the whole ring, so my integration should cover the whole ring if I'm going to consider one component, okay? Or we can take the two components together. So the component DE cosine theta and this one, I'm going to take the two components together. And in this case, I have to sum up over half the charge only. As uh, you know, when you sum up over half of the charge and you take a factor two, you take into consideration these two components, you are end up with taking the effect of the whole ring. So either I take DEZ equal to DE cosine theta. Now I take the effect of a charge on the right and a charge on the left by taking this factor two. So sum up will be over half of the charge only, okay? Or DEZ will be DE cosine theta. I take two, one component only, limits. The yeah, limits should cover the whole charge, okay? Now I am going to go ahead and use this choice. I am going to take one component and do the integration over the whole charge. So DE, Z, the Z component of the electric field. I am going to go uh, for the second choice here. It will be DE cosine theta. Okay. So let's go ahead and substitute by the DE. We already know DE, the electric field DE. So DE will be KE dq over r squared. And cosine theta, uh, we may substitute using this triangle. So this triangle is a right angle triangle. Okay. And here is a hypotenuse, and this is the adjacent z. Here is the hypotenuse r. So cosine theta should be z over r. Uh, now the last step in this substitution is to substitute uh, 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 by r, r equals, r is a hypotenuse in this triangle, remember, equals square root, z square plus a square, uh, or can be written also as z square plus a square to the power of the root can be written as power of, okay, we have here r to the power 3, so r to the power 3, we have here in the denominator r power 2, r, so this is r power 3. It will end up with z square plus a square to the power 3 over 2. Okay, so the electric field dEz will be ke dq z divided by z square plus a square to the power 3 over 2. Now uh, we have to focus on what is the variable we have in this function. We have only one variable. The one variable we have here is dq. As z is constant, z is the height. z is the height. We are calculating the electric field at certain height. z may be one meter or two meter or three meter. So z is constant. Okay. And a is the radius of the ring. And this is constant too. So KE is constant. So we have one variable, which is DQ, this small element. We are uh, calculating the electric field due to this small element. So to take the effect of the charge all over the ring, we are going to sum up over this DQ, DQ to make integration over DQ from zero to the total charge of the ring, which is Q ring will give us uh, the uh, final answer is Q ring. So the total electric field will be simply have the following four, okay. The total electric field EZ will be the integration of 
v e z and we know that the integration as we already did so the result of the integration will uh, will uh, leads us to we just substitute or uh, replace dq we're going to replace this dq after summation to the total charge of the ring so we have ke q ring z divided by z squared plus e squared power four over power three over two okay let's uh, keep in mind what is the variables we have here we have z z is the distance between the point and the center of the ring and the center of the ring so we if we have the ring here and we are going to calculate a certain height uh, z so this is the height z the distance between the point and the center of the ring we have also a a is the radius of the ring and these two factors decide the magnitude of the electric field. okay so this is the magnitude of the electric field the direction of the electric field will be along the axis as we concluded that the horizontal components cancel so the electric field will be in the direction or along the axis if the ring is positively charged the electric field will be out of the ring as you see and if the ring is negatively charged we assume that the ring is placed vertical and it is negatively charged here and i'm going to calculate the electric field on the axis at this point so i will end up with electric field along the axis but it will be directed towards the negative ring right now and i need to decide this distance which is the distance between the point and the center of the ring i'm going to call it z and the radius of the ring which is a and find the magnitude of the electric field using this formula okay now let's go for exercise in this example i assume that we have two rings one is positively charged which is ring one charged with total charge q1 and has a radius r okay and the second ring is negatively charged it is charged with charge q2 this is ring 2 with radius r uh, and it is required to find the electric field at the point p so the point p lies on the axis of the first ring and on the axis of the second ring this is a common axis between these two rings so the total electric field here at the point b is the electric field due to the first ring I'm going to call it E1 plus the electric field due to the second ring is E2. Okay, so the electric field due to the first ring, I'm going to use the formula of the electric field of the ring directly right now. Uh, it is equal to Ke, Q, the charge on this ring is called Q1. Okay, and uh, we have Z here, or Z is the distance from the point to the center of the ring so z is r okay this is z we need it's equal to r divided by z square which is r square plus the radius a square which is r square again to the power 3 over 2 and the direction of the electric field will be to the right as this ring this ring is positively charged so the electric field will be directed away from the positive charge it will be in the i direction so the second electric field will be due to the negatively charged ring the negatively charged ring will get electric field okay equal ke the charge on this ring is q2 now times z z here in the numerator and z is the distance from the center of this ring to the point and here is z so z now will be if if i know all this distance is d so the distance left here is d minus r and uh, as this is r so uh, this distance is 
D minus R, okay. I'm substituting and instead of Z here, Z in the numerator, okay. Divided by Z squared, which is D minus R squared plus the radius squared and all these to the power three over two. And the electric field here again is two in the I direction as this ring is negatively charged. So the electric field due to this ring will be directed towards this ring. So we have here the two electric field in the same direction. They will add to each other. So when you calculate this uh, magnitude, always calculated as positive quantity, and all this magnitude should be positive quantity, and both electric field will add to each other. Thank you, and good luck in your exam. Best wishes.